I want to look at a new poll from CNBC and Change Research conducted between December 17th and 20th, which finds that President Joe Biden's disapproval rating is now at a record high. And I think that's for good reason. So before I tell you why I agree with the majority of Americans here, I first want to look at the data. So Monique Bills of The Hill reports, overall, the survey showed 56% of voters disapproved of Biden's performance in office, an uptick from 54% in September and 49% in April. His overall rating now stands at 44%. Biden was particularly hard hit when it came to the public's opinion of his handling of the economy and the COVID-19 pandemic. Specifically, the poll indicated that 60% of respondents disapproved of Biden's handling of the economy and 55% disapproved of his pandemic response. For the economy, 72% said they disapprove of Biden's management of the price of everyday goods and 66% said they did not approve of the president's efforts to help their wallets. Regarding vaccine mandates, the survey also indicated that 50% said Biden had gone too far, 26% said the administration had the right approach, and 24% said it had not gone far enough. Now, before we talk about this poll, I do want to look at aggregate data provided to us courtesy of 538. Now, as you can see, Biden's net disapproval sits at about 52 percent, although it is worth noting that these numbers, even if they're bad, they've remained relatively stable since mid-November. So this either means that this new poll from CNBC is an outlier or it signals the start of a brand new trend. Now, I'm not going to try and make any predictions because I'm not very good at making political predictions given how volatile the political climate is in the United States. But what I will say is that I absolutely agree with the majority of Americans here. I overwhelmingly disapprove of Biden's job. And let me tell you why. So on Monday, the U.S. reported over a million new COVID cases in a single day. Let me repeat that. One million new cases in just one day while Biden is in office. Now, keep in mind that this poll wasn't conducted this week. This was taken in mid-December, right? But what I think is that this is going to further hurt Biden's approval because he's not responding to this pandemic and changes to the pandemic with the urgency and sensitivity needed to address it in a meaningful way. So he held an address and he said nothing about shutting down schools or promoting distance learning in spite of the fact that hospital admissions among children are twice as high now as they were during the peak of the Delta wave. But no reason to believe we should shut down schools, folks. He promised no new survival checks, no push for legislation to freeze evictions. He didn't renew calls to expand the early childhood tax credit. He urged people to get vaccinated, which is good, obviously. But I mean, he offered no help to people who did do their part, who got vaccinated, but still may be affected by the Omicron surge, either directly or indirectly. And putting aside COVID, he hasn't even canceled the measly $10,000 in student debt that he promised on the campaign trail. And he had the audacity to tell student loan borrowers of all people that they should quote do their part to prepare for payments resuming on may 1st how about this motherfucker you do your part and you do what we elected you to do you cancel student debt the u.s government holds the overwhelming majority of debt so fucking cancel it you can do it with your pen stop sitting on your ass and take action you do your part he has the audacity to say, oh, 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 you do your part. Make sure you do research and you figure out all the different options that we can help you with your repayment plan in May 1st when it resumes. No, do your part. Now, putting that aside, uh, when it comes to healthcare, he ran on a public option and we all thought he was insincere and rightfully so because he said next to nothing about healthcare since taking office during a global pandemic. I shouldn't have to remind people about that, but I think it's really important to uh, point out the absurdity here. And up until this point, he still has not done the bare minimum when it comes to voting rights. So it's not just that Democrats are going to be wiped out at the end of the year because of gerrymandering, but there are GOP controlled states across the country that are instituting voter suppression laws and they're giving themselves the ability to, to thwart the will of voters in their states so if they want to appoint electors to the electoral college that shuns the popular votes in their states some state legislatures are doing that and biden's administration isn't taking this seriously not putting pressure on members of his own party who are sabotaging what he says is his agenda on top of that roe v wade might actually be overturned during his administration's tenure and has he said anything about packing the supreme court so this is 
a failure. Biden is a failure of a president. That's not to negate from the good things that he's done, right? He did end the Afghanistan war. He brought the uh, drone strikes down to near zero. That's objectively good. But it's not enough. With how many crises we're facing, you have to be able to adapt and meet the moment. And I, I think it's pretty obvious that Biden has not done that. He's been a failure, and that's why I think that his approval rating and disapproval more specifically will continue to increase as Omicron gets worse. Because like it or not, this is still a global pandemic. I know that we're all ready to transition into endemic status for COVID-19, but we're not there yet. Omicron changed things. And yes, there are differences between the Omicron variant and the Delta variant, but you adapt, you change things. You don't just sit on your ass and do nothing, and change nothing. You still hold the power. You still have all of government with the exception of the Supreme Court. And if you're not even at a minimum using your bully pulpit to exert influence on people in government, then why are you there? What's the point of having a president? We might as well abolish the fucking role. So, you know, that's why I disapprove. And I don't think that the American people are wrong because this is someone who is banking on what he did in like the first two months of his presidency. You lied about the $2,000 checks. You gave us $1,400 checks, but that still helped. And no talk about that again. No talk of paying people to stay home. I mean, where's the fight? This administration is showing no signs of life. And it's a fucking joke. It's almost like they want to be wiped out in 2022. But perhaps maybe Biden actually does. So that way the pressure on him to enact legislation just diminishes. I don't know. Either way, that's why I disapprove of Joe Biden. And that's why I think that most Americans see through it. He's like all other presidents, not doing enough, not even pretending to care about the American people. And it shows that's why his disapproval continues to increase and why I think it will actually rise relatively sharply. I said I wasn't going to make a prediction, but I mean, just like talking through all of this, I've convinced myself that there's no way his disapproval doesn't go up, barring some extreme action taking to ameliorate the disaster that is the Omicron surge. We'll see, though. But I mean, either way, what a fucking failure. What a joke of an administration. This is why people like myself pushed for Bernie relentlessly back in 2019 and 2020. But the liberals said, nope, we've got to have Joe Biden because he's practical. He can reach across the aisle and get things done. How's that working out for you now? Not working out too well, is it? Yeah. You know... You... You... You know... You know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.